Stickies. Figma just helped us figure out what to do with all of these using AI. Let's check it out. So immediately in FigJam in the top left, you're gonna see this little generate star here. So we're gonna click on that and you're gonna see a couple of options here, brainstorm, plan, Gantt chart, and you can ask it to create any kind of template. And when you click in this generate box, you're gonna see a couple of suggestions. So you can do a weekly sync, plan, brainstorm, etc. So why don't we just try brainstorm? We'll click that. And now you can add a couple of stages or steps to this brainstorm. So we're gonna say, add an icebreaker, research, goals. We'll just add everything, see what it looks like, and then click generate. So it's making this a board for us right now with research, insights, and company goals. And if we zoom in here, we're going to see that it's created a cool icebreaker for us. Some key findings here, company goals, next steps with this really nice little chart here. Um, and then rapid ideation with some stickies. So immediately what I notice is that this is probably not the order in which I would conduct this meeting. After the icebreaker, I would probably, I don't know, maybe do the brainstorming after that. Next steps would definitely be last. Maybe company goals would be third and research insights would be over here. So, you know, you might have to reorder these. You might have to regenerate these sometimes if it's not exactly what you want. Okay, so that's looking better. Now, let's say that we did the rapid ideation. So we've got six minutes here, we can come down here, we can turn on our timer, and we can set it to six minutes. And as that's running, everybody in the team is gonna be in here, they're going to be adding in their rapid ideation suggestions. So what's so cool about this is now I can select this section, this brainstorming section, and then you'll see that Fig Jam AI comes up, click on that and I can click summarize. And when I do that, it's going to generate a summary here of all of these research insights. Just summarize and format these into bullet points. So now it's saying for the onboarding experience, let's improve this as a key area for product improvement. Enhancing the initial user experience can lead to higher user engagement and satisfaction. So this is great. Not only is it summarizing what was on the stickies, but it's actually referencing reasons why these things are important. Um, it says here that the AI generated meal plan can provide users with personalized meal suggestions. This feature would save time and effort for users who struggle with meal planning. Really cool. And then with this, you can copy this text just like that, send it away, or you can link specifically to this summarization board. Now we can even go a step further. So now let's say that we want to send this email to a teammate. What we can do now is use a widget called Jambot. So go down here, click on Jambot, and then this will come up. And now what we can do is a bunch of other things. So now let's say that I want to do rewrite this. And we're going to take this and connect it down here to this board and get rid of that example. And I'm going to say, rewrite this as an email to my product manager. Click rewrite this. So what that did was that took this board, everything in it, including the title and the instructions for the exercise, which is a little weird. And it wrote an email and summarized it in this paragraph style. And so now we can keep on manipulating this generated content and maybe we can turn this into a story, a poem, a song. So one thing that I use a lot when I'm planning my information architecture is flowcharts and decision trees, and it's going to generate this basic one. So it starts with the starting points, the options, the decisions at each point. I can say flowchart with a decision uh, tree for an onboarding process for a meal delivery app and go ahead and generate that. And here we go. Sign up. If they're a new customer, yes, they go through this journey. If they're not, then they go through this journey. And then we can take Jambot and do other things with this. So let's say I wanted to ideate on this board. I'm going to go ahead and click ideate and just grab this end and snap it to the middle of that board. We can get rid of this sticky and then go ahead and click on ideate. So this has given us some creative ways to present the onboarding to our new users in this flow. We can have an interactive quiz. Um, personalized checklist, implement a chat bot, fun ways we can solve this problem and present the user experience. Okay, so now let's go even deeper with this. Let's say that we decide we wanna do this interactive quiz. It sounds cool. Well, we can say, teach me about this. 
And now we can keep going deeper and it's going to tell us what is an interactive quiz? How can we integrate that into onboarding? What are some ideas? Do we use multiple choice, fill in the blank? And then we can say, give me examples. So this is saying example one, adding a multiple choice quiz at the end of each section of the onboarding tutorial. Um, designing quizzes that provide instant feedback to users, highlighting correct answers and explaining incorrect ones. Rabbit hole is another one that's pretty cool. So we want to go even deeper into this. Like, let's say we want to explore more gamification techniques. Now this involves incorporating game elements and mechanics in non game context to enhance the engagement and motivation. So it's suggesting things like leaderboards and badges and levels and rewards and competitions. And it can just go on and on and on. I have had so much fun playing with this and it has given me so many amazing ideas and really significantly reduced my time that I would be setting up all of these sticky boards and coming up with ideas. And there are lots of other charts that we can do here. We can plan for a product review, for example. I love all of these little scales and interactive things that it generates. Say that you and your team are voting on something. You can just click anywhere there and it will cast your vote right on this chart. And then you can see everyone that voted and then you can show the results and reveal them when everyone's done and see where everyone aligns on this scale. Really this combination of generated templates and then Jambot to help you go deeper and resummarize and rewrite things. It's a really powerful combination. Now there may be some caps or limitations for how many generations you can create depending on your plan. So if you want to check out what some of these things do ahead of time, you can head over to the Figma help files and check out the Jambot functions. And this will really just give you a breakdown of the use cases and possible prompts that you can use. And let me know what kind of tutorials you might want to see where I'm using Jambot in my day-to-day -day workflow. One of the hardest parts in UX is being able to synthesize all that stuff together and analyze it and put it into something that is useful and actionable and shareable with other people. And this is helping us do that in an extremely easy way. So it is a very awesome sidekick for your design process. Now, if you are concerned about how AI is using the information here on your board, such as your research that might be sensitive, then definitely check out the help docs. It does give a summary of the data usage and it says here that it uses OpenAI to process this data and that this data is not to be used for model training. So the data inputted by the AI features is just sent for processing and then the AI generates the output. And that data is only temporarily retained in OpenAI's environment. And so you can learn more about how Figma processes all of this information through AI and decide if that's something that you're comfortable with and that you wanna use. And you can also learn how you can opt out of these AI features if you aren't interested in using them. I'm gonna be doing a live workshop on how you can use all of these new AI features inside of FigJam to do user research and brainstorming and all sorts of things. And it's completely free to all Designer Up students. So if you are, definitely come join that live session. And if you're not, consider enrolling in our course where you learn to do all of these things, do user research and UI design and use awesome tools like this in your process.